Uh, okay, everyone. Um, what's up, Goldie here? We are going to be going over the main slate here tonight on Wednesday. Kind of getaway day. Just a six-gamer. Uh, sorry I couldn't get a video up for the early slate, the eight-gamer. Pretty interesting slate, I thought. Um, you know, a heavy ownership on the Cardinals again, of course. Uh, but a good tournament slate in that you could really pivot to a bunch of stuff um, if you, for some crazy reason, wanted to get off of St. Louis and fade them against Jose Arrania at Coors Field. Not the best idea. Um, in any case, had some audio problems with the early slate vids. Uh, I actually recorded it twice and had the same problem, but hopefully we have gotten this fixed now. Um, so we're going to go over the six-game main. Try and keep it short here since it's we're getting the video up a, a little bit later. Um, we do have projections up and pushed to the site. Looks like we uh, might be having a little bit of an issue with the population directly to Sabersim. Um, I think Rody has talked about this a little bit in a vid or two that he has done. Um, if you guys ever see that they're not populating and they are updated on the True DFS website, you can just go and copy the projections from there, or you can download them as a CSV from True DFS, and then you can manually upload them into Sabersim or whatever optimizer you choose um, to make sure you're getting the it, the most updated uh, numbers there. But um, it does sound like we, we've had a little bit of an issue with the auto population there so we're trying to get that fixed in the background um so just uh hang tight with us and um you know we'll get it squared away um nevertheless projections are up on the site and as is ownership naturally here on the short six gamer we're going to see very heavy ownership on spencer strider tonight uh, i think it's perfectly warranted i don't think at, i mean he's he's underpriced um at 9,300 against Reds here, they're going to have a lot of difficulty, um, you know, against arms that are way worse <laughs> than than Strider. Um, so I I think even at 60% ownership, I think this is pretty uh, pretty low to be quite honest. Uh, I don't see how I don't end up with 100% Strider tonight. Um, if if I if I don't have 100%, it's going to be very, very close. Uh, and I, I, you're just not going to be able to get away from it. This median projection, 26 points is admittedly very, very high. Um, and with the early slate, so, some of the ownership numbers may be a little off. I have it with the models having uh, um, you know, some of the, the manual input that, that's going into the models with some of these numbers may be off a little so this these numbers may change but overall for the most part these are just algorithmic and these numbers are just spitting out what they're spitting out or the models are um and they're spitting out a 26 point median projection across the industry for strider tonight that's a high number and you know i kind of i look at that and be like whoa you know let's let's slow it down a little bit but um i mean he could he could strike out 15 here in in six or even seven innings um really without batting an eye to be quite honest like double digit k's are very well within range and really the only problem that we run into with strider is going deep enough into games um he does have a little bit of a, a i don't want to call it a walk problem but you know you can spray it sometimes a little bit if if the spot in the fastball is is off uh but nevertheless, I mean, that, that shouldn't really deter us from getting as much strider as we can here. Now, the other pivots, if you want to get up to them, you can play Kershaw for sure. The Giants are going to strike out a good bit. At this ownership, I, I'm a little concerned um, because the combination of the ownership and the price tag make this a little eh for me. Um, it's not that Kershaw doesn't have 30-point upside, um, but I think in most outcomes, he's about in this 20 to 24 range. And are you sure the Dodgers could, you know, score some runs for him against Alex Cobb tonight? 
and he could squeeze an extra four points and get a win out of it. Um, and that puts him in in pretty good value range, certainly. And at that point, if he puts up 28, you don't really care what the ownership is. Um, so that's fine to, to get here if you end up landing on it. Um, I'm not going to, like, X him out of the pools or anything. But um, it's definitely not my favorite play here. Uh, it's it's going to be Strider pretty much no matter how you slice it. Even even Gosman gets Detroit. Um, problem with Gosman is he just doesn't go deep enough. Like, I know in his, in his last start, he did go, I believe, seven innings, um, or at least well into the to sixth and, or something like that. So, you know, there there is a little bit of length there in, in good matchups if he's really rolling. Um, but we saw that Detroit got to Alec Manoa yesterday, and... There's risk with any pitcher in baseball, no matter how good they are. DeGrom gave up a couple of runs to the Royals last night. You know what I mean? Like, um, there's risk with any pitcher in baseball against any other team in baseball. And if, if Gosman is even slightly off, you're taking quite a bit of risk eating this 10000 here um, when there's probably some teams, some expensive teams down here that you're likely to want to get to. And if he didn't have it even slightly, like he might might not make it a full five or six innings here, and and that's unfortunate. You need your starter to be going a full a full six innings uh, almost exclusively when you're paying ten thousand for him. So um, at an elevated ownership number, not just because Alec Manoa got uh, got beat up a little bit by the Tigers, um, you know it doesn't take me off of Gosman or anything like that. Like, that's not how we want to play. But it's more so the, the price tag and the fact that he doesn't go super deep into games uh, all that often. He's got a killer arsenal, though, and at with the splitter, if he's got it going, he could strike out 10 or 12 as well, uh, similar to Strider down here. So if you want to play both of them, um, any of any two of these top three guys up here are very playable. Uh, Eovaldi just a little bit lower he gets the Royals I think this is a fine tournament play uh, I would not be crazy about getting a lot of exposure to Eovaldi and I think it's perfectly fine to stack against him as well he has a homer problem and he gives up a boatload of hard contact in the air so um, if you want to stack against Eovaldi I think that's fine Alex Cobb I don't particularly want to stack against him but the Dodgers probably not going to be played all that heavily tonight uh, it, it's mostly going to be um Baltimore here, who get Ken Waldachuk, and Toronto, who uh, get Eddie Rodriguez. So those are basically your your chalk stacks. Of course, Texas is is going to be uh, very popular against Brad Keller, who always gets stacked against. Um, so those are really your three chalk stacks. So if you want to get off the board and play pretty much anybody, this is a six gamer, right? So you you can do whatever you want, um, and you can get there in tournaments with pretty much any team I would say probably outside of Detroit but yeah that's probably how you're going to want to structure is take one at least one of these these upper tier guys maybe even both of them or two of them rather um there are maybe a piece or two you could you could play down here um like a Chris Sale like 7400 I don't I think he's having trouble throwing strikes but uh, we're not. This isn't Chris Sale at 35% now. We're doing. He, he's at 8%. Um, pretty low median projection so far, so that's kind of worrisome and curious. But he's basically at the same price tag as he was against Detroit, and Tampa's a markedly better team, of course. Um, they're still going to strike out a little bit, but they could platoon, and you know, so the the ownership number looks a little bit low, but not terribly low. Um, Honestly, I'd probably rather play 15% of sale than Eovaldi, uh, to be quite honest. Hunter Green, you can play, certainly. He has strikeout stuff, definitely, and that's how we want to attack Atlanta. The problem with Hunter Green is he's a he's a fly ball pitcher, giving up a lot of hard contact directly on the barrel, um, and it's really to both sides of the plate. So he hasn't quite figured that out yet, but this is an attainable price tag here at 6900 So you can play him. Uh, you could even mix in some tournament stuff of Brad Keller at 6,700. Like, he has upside for 17 points or, or whatever. 
Uh, as a matter of fact, I think he had exactly 17 points in his last outing. Um, I generally don't like stacking against Brad Keller, so you'll get some leverage in teams you do that with, with um, by fading Texas. And if you play Keller on the other side, um, and he doesn't get torched, then you know you're you're gaining quite a bit on the field there. Um, not a f- my favorite tournament play, of course, because he doesn't have a hell of a lot of strikeout upside himself. But um, I think this is a, a reasonable construction that you could consider uh, playing some Keller down here. If you just want to fade Hunter Green, you can stack Atlanta, right? Because Hunter Green gives up so much power. So um, some expensive teams that you can get to that may make it a little bit more difficult to just click in a Strider and a Gosman, for example. Uh, that's an expensive combination. You're spending over 20000 So you've only got 30 for eight spots. And... That's going to make it difficult. There's value, certainly, um, but you might have to do something crazy and, like, stack Oakland with everybody that's basically free over there. Um, one player in the in the lineup that's over 3,600, and that's Ramon Laureano at 42. Tony Kemp is exactly 3,600. So um, very inexpensive over here for Oakland. You could stack them against Dean Kramer if you want. So that could be a construction that gets you to both a Gosman and a Strider, uh, or a Kershaw Strider, something like that. Um, so that there's options here, definitely to get to cheaper teams. There's options with cheaper arms on the mound, like Hunter Green and a Chris Sale. You could run that kind of combo. There's a lot of strikeout upside there. And you could play a chalkier stack, like a Baltimore or a Toronto or something like that. So um, probably not going to go deeply into the games uh, today on, on, on today's vid. So I just wanted to do a quick breakdown here. Um, lineup wise, we, I do have them up here on the, uh, on the other monitor. Um, so you guys can just kind of bask in the, uh, in the pitcher projections here. Um, these are going to adjust of course, but, um, you know, as of right now, as I mentioned, you can stack some, some Oakland against Dean Kramer. Doesn't, Kramer doesn't have a, a lot of strikeout stuff. He's only got about a 15% K rate to the right side of the plate. It's about 20% to lefties and, and Oakland's definitely going to platoon. And as I said, they're very inexpensive over here. You could play Tony Kemp, and you could play Ryan Noda at 2,500 at first base. He's got a lot of pop there. Uh, Jesus Aguilar, you can play him at first base if you don't get on to Noda. Uh, 2,900. Aguilar doesn't strike out. He's got plenty of pop. Now, Baltimore will play down power a little bit since they adjusted the dimensions. More of a pitcher's park anymore. Um, but you're still going to want to be stacking... Baltimore on the other side. Ken Waldachuk uh, is going for the A's, and, and he's got okay stuff, but he's having problems still locating uh, early in his career. Uh, you're definitely not going to be want to be playing him. Um, there are really a, a lot of Oakland, to be quite honest. Uh, I, I think getting to them, if, if you need to get up on, on the mound, is respectable uh, but but it's certainly off the board and I think there are probably uh, some other teams you may want to get to that are exhibiting some pretty low ownership as well namely like the Dodgers for example uh, just markedly more power and a better team than Oakland they do of course get Alex Cobb in San Francisco when it's 55 degrees at night so you know things are different of course but um, you know, not my favorite to be going after, <clears throat> excuse me, going after uh, Dean Kramer. He doesn't normally get blown up all that much. Of course, I, I think in his first start or second start this year, he did. Um, and, and he'll give up a little bit of pop, but uh, only about a 130, 150 ISO to either side of the plate. So nothing terrible there. Um, so really not my favorite stack for Oakland. Uh, definitely want to get to Baltimore, though. You're going to want to play Austin Hayes. Uh, Rutsch you can play. He'll hit from the right side great. Ryan Mountcastle's too cheap at 4300 He hit two dingers yesterday. So I don't generally like chasing that, but um, he's too cheap. He's going to be very popular. So if you want to maybe get different in your Orioles stack, you could leave him off and play another high upside first baseman. You're never lacking high upside first baseman on – pretty much any slate. So that's certainly a, a viable construction as well. But Anthony Santander, 4,100 in the outfield, also a switch hitter and also too cheap. Ramon Urias, 
Second and third base eligible, 3,300, too cheap. James McCann, 2,200, <laughs> too cheap. Yeah, so you could play pretty much everybody here. Georgie Mateo, not necessarily too cheap, 3,900, but can turn it over the lineup that is pretty good down at the bottom of the list. And he has a good bit of bag upside. So you can play um, a little bit of Baltimore as well. Why don't we just bring the lineups over here? Um, the projected lineups from Labs. Now, on the mound for the Rays, we haven't even talked about this yet. Taj Bradley, he is one of the better pitching prospects in baseball. And he's going to come up and make his debut. And he is a starter. However, not totally stretched out, I don't believe. Uh, most of he's thrown is like 60 pitches in both of his starts um, into minors. So we might run into these sorts of worries. If you want to get to uh, a Strider and a Taj Bradley or something, I, I mean, he's, he's a stone min for a pitcher. And he can go about, you know, 60 pitches or so. Um, now, that could that could just equal three innings, which is not great. Uh, but it could also equal four or even five. So probably in most scenarios not going to get more than four innings out of him, though. So it makes him a bit of a hard target. And as we can see here, pretty low on the on the projection spectrum, uh, just a 10-point median projection so far. But if you stack, like, full-stack Gosman with Toronto and throw in Strider as well, you could... Uh, or, or something, either Gosman and, and Strider. You could throw in a Taj Bradley. Um, he's got good stuff, and uh, four pitches, I believe. Command, perhaps a bit of an issue. Um, but they're probably not going to let him go all that deep into the game. So unless he just gets totally bludgeoned uh, early into, you know, first couple innings or whatever, uh, he is a... He's a reasonable cheap piece. Like I said, he's the stone man. You can take shots on a six-game slate if you find a construction that you'd like to get to uh, that would require that. That said, on the other side, you can always play Rafi Devers, 6,300. Uh, it's not cheap. And third base plays today. Kind of starving a little bit. You can play Austin Riley for sure, 5,600. You can play Matt Chapman. He'll be popular definitely. And Gunner up there for the Orioles will garner some ownership, as will both Josh Young and Josh Smith. Uh, Got to be careful here down with Texas, just as I'm looking at it. Uh, Corey Seager came out of the game last night. He tweaked something, um, either an ankle or a hammy or something, I forget. And So he might not even be in the list today, which, uh, you know, so something to keep in mind there. But third base plays Max Muncy, fly ball hitter against Alex Cobb, a ground ball pitcher. That's Okay, it's fine. Uh, Wilmer Flores is still too cheap. You could play him at third base. But um, Rafi Devers, 6,300, always value on Rafi. He's one of the best hitters in the league. So you can get to some Boston plays here too. And eventually you're going to want to. Um, you know, the, the Rays are not going to win every single game. Now, I, I know they're close. But uh, their 85-game win streak is going to come to an end at some point. Um and it could very well be today with a, a young arm that has potentially uh, some command issues and not overwhelming stuff that he's shown in the upper minors, at least. You know, a multitude of pitches, of course, um, but still a, a young arm. And if you can't blast through the upper minors, he's only got, about, I think, 12 or 15 starts in the in AAA. So um, not a whole lot of experience in the upper minors. Um, if you can't blast through those guys with more than you know 24% K rate or something like that, um, you know you're probably not going to be able to do the same thing uh, or any better that is than than that whatever you're exhibiting at in the upper minors at the major league level. So um, you know don't shy away from playing Boston here. You want to play Devers, sure. Alex Verdugo at 47 in Tampa. I'm not excited about this price tag at all, but um, in stacks, you could play him, definitely. Uh, Masataki Yoshida, 5,000. This is fine. He's got plenty of power. And he's comfortable hitting in a dome. <laughs> I don't know if that's a, that's really a, a stat we can um, we can rely on. But uh, 5,000 is fine if you want to go after a young arm here. Tristan Casas is still very cheap, 2,600, as is Christian Arroyo, Raimel Tapia. So um, we'll see what they want to do with the list down here. But I think Boston is a viable stack if you want to go after Bradley over here. Tampa on the other side, you can play them too. They're a little bit more expensive, certainly 58 for Wander. Um, 
and 61 for Randy up here. But uh, Yandi, 4,900. Like, let's slow down. But everybody else, pretty cheap. Harold Ramirez, a lot of pop from the right side, 3,300. Vidal Brujan, they did call him back up. Stone Min, um, not much a power bat, but has uh, some really vital hit tool and, and contact skills. Um, good. They tried to really lead him off and, and put him at the top of the lineup last year. Couldn't really get it going, but um, still a really good talent here in Vidal Brujan. Uh, Bethancourt hits lefties very well, so you can attack Chris Sale and hope he just walks the entire country. Um, just because Tampa's not going to win 162, it doesn't mean they have to lose today. And Sale has shown some vulnerability despite the impressive strikeout rate still at 25% or whatever. So um, you can play pretty much everybody in this game, I think. Uh, would probably side with Sale at 74 and low ownership. Um, and some Boston targeting a young arm over here. But I think you could play a little bit of, of Tampa as well. It's a six-gamer. Um, and we talked about uh, Toronto being mega chalk here. You can go after Eddie. He is not going to throw it by anybody anymore. And this is a, not a very good matchup for him, of course. So you can play pretty much everybody. And Toronto is going to be the second or third chalkiest team today. So absolutely a viable stack. Uh, they're expensive. you got to pay for pretty much all of them here. But some good hitters. Uh, Allie Kirk got into a ball yesterday. Uh, Whit Merrifield, price coming up a little bit, but still playable at 34. Danny Jansen, fly ball hitter with a lot of pop. 3,600 behind the plate as well. And and certainly Springer, Bichette, and Vladdy up top. Uh, Matt Chapman, good start to the season here, 47. So price is elevated on these guys. You don't have to go after Toronto, but that's going to keep their ownership down compared to what it would be otherwise with cheaper prices, of course. Um, no Detroit for me. If you want to go after Gosman, I'm not wild about this. Um, it like it'd be with a fly baller. Um, like you can play some Kerry Carpenter. You can play a Torque if you want to stack against a very popular pitcher. Go ahead. Not the greatest though. Uh, we talked about Hunter Green. You can play him. You can also stack against him. Uh, with Atlanta, you can stack Atlanta literally every day. They were pretty disappointing yesterday against Luis Sessa, and even though they put up, a, what, seven runs or something. Um, not everybody got there, but uh, Hunter Green, he's on the barrel. He gives up a lot of power, so you can you can target him for sure. At 6,900, I think I would rather side with him if I had to choose between the two. Um, it's just more often that the pitcher's not going to get completely torched. But... Um, I mean, his numbers are very worrisome on the barrel a lot. So you can uh, you can play both sides here. Uh, definitely not fading Spencer Strider and definitely not playing the res. Just not worth it. If you want to, like, Sp Strider, he's been known to get blown up on very rare occasions. Um, if you want to go after the reds here, I, I mean, it's a six-gamer. Like, don't expect it to work. But uh, and I really don't like these price tags either. 38, 5K for Fraley, no thanks. Um, Jason Bossler, 3,900. I don't really want to deal with this. 54 for India and 47 for Tyler Stevenson. Uh, no, no thanks. Um, like I said, you can play the Royals a little bit and stack against Eovaldi. He's got a homer problem. You can play pretty much the top six, maybe even throw in some Kyle Isbell if you're building a few Royals teams. Um, he's got some pop and he's got some speed. He's he's a decent little athlete over here, and he's cheap at, at 2400 I think it's a viable piece if you need to get to some expensive pitching on the mound. Certainly, you've played Texas, but got to keep an eye on the Corey Seager stuff. Um, their price is starting to come up a little bit as well, but Josh Smith will make this very cheap if he's in the two-hole for you today instead of Seager. Obviously, Robbie, Robbie Grossman down here at uh, 2800 Jonah Heim, too. So they're, they're very playable, Josh Young at 38 I mean... Really, I guess the only expensive guys are Garcia and uh, Marcus Semien here. Even Nate Lowe at 46. That's perfectly fine price tag. But they're going to be chalky, too, because of that price. Or those prices, rather. Uh, and we briefly went over the Dodgers. Now, I don't like targeting Alex Cobb. Can you play him at 7,900 tonight? Not my favorite going after the Dodgers. But this is a six-game slate. And you can play him for sure. He's got enough, and he's got a, a, a good splitter. And this is... In San Francisco, 55 degrees. So um, go ahead. Heavy, heavy ground ball rate. 3-1 to one for Alex Cobb. So you can play him against the Dodgers. Um, 
if you do get any sort of outsized exposure to him, I would absolutely play some Dodgers on the other side. Don't forget about James Outman. Even though he's down here in the 7, 3,600, his price isn't moving, and he's been fantastic to start the season. Uh, I think the early start for Jason Hayward, probably smoke and mirrors, but um, 28, he's playable and, and cheap for sure. That will make it easier to get to JD if you want to do that. Not crazy about this. Um, this matchup or this price tag. Max Muncy you can play, though, for sure. Maybe start starting to heat up a little bit. Um, but these cheaper guys will make it easier to get to mostly Freddie Freeman and Mookie Betts, who you probably uh, are perfectly fine playing on any given night. Um, and lastly, San Francisco here. Uh, like I said, Wilmer Flores is too cheap still at um, first and third eligibility. Good hitter over here. Pretty consistent hitter. And... I, I think car targeting Kershaw is, is okay. Uh, if you want to take some small shorts on him at, at 9,900, I think that's all right. And you can target. They have some decent righty power over here still. David Villar, J.D. Davis, and uh, Wilmer Flores for sure. They've been leading off Tyro Estrada a little bit. Not a whole lot of pop, but he's got some. 4,400, not the best price tag, but uh, it's, it's not the worst. And Joey Bart behind the plate. Uh, at a flat 2,000, he's got plenty of power. So uh, they can platoon a little bit over here. Probably stay off of the lefties, of course. But um, not, you know, this is kind of similar to like an Oakland or a Kansas City uh, or anything. like. Definitely not the Reds. But um, in stacking against Kershaw, not my favorite play, but has a little bit of upside there against a, a guy that will be popular. Right. So that's probably it for the uh, abbreviated breakdown, I suppose. Um, get, get to Strider. He's just underpriced, and and I don't think he's owned enough, to be quite honest, so far. Uh, and then you kind of mix in a bunch of guys, Gosman, Kershaw. You can play Evaldi if you want. You can play Cobb and Sale as well. Hunter Green obviously has the most raw strikeout upside of any of these guys, um, even though Evaldi's got some good stuff. Alex Cobb's got a 24% K rate, whatever. So does Sale. Uh so some interesting tournament bills that you can construct here, probably staying off almost completely everybody down here at the bottom of the pricing spectrum. Uh, Brad Keller, you could play him, but you're really hoping for suppression upside, uh, not dealing with the Waldachuk, Eddie Rodriguez, or the Dean Kramers. If you want to get to some Taj Bradley, I mean, go ahead. So uh, that's pretty much it. Um, good luck, everybody, on the main. Hopefully we'll be back tomorrow with, uh, with f videos for whatever early slate they run and a main as well. Good luck.